I'm Paul Beckwith. I was just on TV, on CTV News, talking about electronic waste. And since I had to do a little bit of research for that topic, I'm going to discuss it here in a video. And I'll talk about the climate change connection, which of course there, there always is one. So the UN just released a report today called Global E-Waste Monitor 2020. Okay, an extensive report on e-waste. And of course, like everything else in our world, e-waste seems to be on the rise. You know, it's at a record year. Um, in 2019, 53.6 million tons of e-waste was dumped, discarded, you know, dumped in landfills or burned. Only 17.4% was recycled. So that 53.6 million tons represents about 82, almost 83% of the e-waste that's produced. And to give you an idea, I mean, this is a massive amount of e-waste. It's, if you take the weight of it, it's equivalent to about uh, 350 uh, Queen Elizabeth II, Queen Elizabeth II cruise ships. So 350 cruise ships, the, take the weight of that, that's how much e-waste was produced in 2019, which was, of course, a record year. Now, e-waste is just defined as any product, any discarded product with a battery or a plug. So, you know, we have, you know, a lot of phones are obsoleted, right? Smartphones, people have, the, have to have the latest and greatest, um, for example, or computers. And, uh, you know, those comprise a lot of e-waste, but it also includes all electronic items, um, whether they're broken or whether they're obsoleted. Um, and, it, you know, it includes things like refrigerators and air conditioners as well, appliances, things like that. Now, that amount of e-waste that was produced in 2019 represents an increase of 21% in just five years. So it's rapidly rising. Um, by 2030, that number is expected to be over 74 million tons of e-waste dumped, and that would be a doubling over 16 years. So a doubling in 2030, the amount of e-waste will be about double what it was in 2014, if present trends continue. China produces the most. In 2019, it was 10 million tons. The U.S. was second at 7 million tons, and India was third at 3 million. So those three countries alone comprise about 40% of the total amount of e-waste. Now, the stuff that is dumped, it actually has quite a bit of value. If you take the um, components uh, that are in the electronics, and those include things like platinum, gold, silver and lots of copper the value of those things in the dumped e-waste uh, in 2019 is estimated to be about 57 billion dollars uh, along with those components those valuable precious metals there's lots of toxic toxic substances in the e-waste and those pose a health and environmental hazard to people uh, for example, there's quite a bit of mercury, and the mercury then gets into the ecosystem, and it gets concentrated as you move up the food chain. So as you get higher and higher to the top of the food chain, there's more and more mercury, and it does accumulate also in certain regions of the world. For example, with the Arctic thawing, there's a lot of mercury that has accumulated in that environment. And with the thawing, it's released into the environment. And those sort of bursts of mercury, for example, can be very, very, de well, are, not can be, but are very, very detrimental to the environment. You know, a lot of it is our attitudes, right? Human attitudes. Um, we don't think in a cyclical fashion. We think we create the products and there's no thought given to what happens when these products go into the environment. And that's not just in e-waste. Think of, think of plastics. Think of the little tiny pellets, nano 
uh, particles of plastic that are used in abrasive substances, for example, or, or in shampoos, for example. And these just get flushed down the drain, end up in oceans, and you know it takes an awful long time for them to degrade and they're very harmful in the environment and we find them all the way up the food chain and we find them everywhere in the deepest parts of the oceans, etc. We tend to think uh, that we can just throw something away, but there is no away. You know, what is away? Away is somewhere else on the planet. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, once we throw it away, we just think that's the end of the problem, right? But, uh, you know, it's very important to think of the cradle to grave type of thing, type of thinking when we're talking about designing products. And, uh, you know, so we need cyclical thinking of products through their life cycle, the cradle to grave thinking, but also we need to ban companies from from planned obsolescence. So, you know, let's talk about smartphones, for example. Um, you know, Apple got dinged um, a few years ago because their, their um, updates of operating system, their, their operating system on the iPhone actually had some code in there to slow down older phones that were a few years old. So, you know, a lot of the, the updates were just automatic. You know, it asked, do you want to update? People say, yeah, update. And uh, if you had a phone two or three years old, it would suddenly start slowing down and slowing down and slowing down over time. And eventually you just get fed up with it and you have to buy a new phone, right? And they were, you know, they were found to be doing that intentionally, slowing down older phones with the operating system updates and they got big fines and rap on the knuckles. You know, you can't do that, that's illegal. You know, another example with Apple that comes to mind, um, you know, I'm not, shouldn't be picking just on Apple. I mean, this is, I'm talking about the smartphone example, but you know, they went and changed the power cord to, you know, a firewire power cord. And also they got rid of the jack for earphones. So, you know, what happens to all of the earphones that plug in, you know, can no longer be use or you know forces people to buy an adapter or just get rid of the old earphones and buy new ones so it you know it's planned obsolescence the european union has started an initiative and they're trying to standardize the power cords to all phones so it doesn't matter what company you buy a smartphone from in the world this the a power cord that you, you know, all the power cords work with all of the phones. So, you know, standardization like that can greatly eliminate waste. Um, now, in terms of the, uh, you know, the actual lockdowns um, has had multiple effects on the amount of e-waste that is being produced this year. You know, po some of the positive things from an e-waste standpoint is you know, people might tend to keep their, you know, old phones for longer because they've lost their jobs and uh, therefore less phones, for example, might end up in the landfills and household appliances and things um, that would be replaced by people. People are having second thoughts about replacing them and keeping them for longer periods of time. So that would be a positive thing in terms of reducing e-waste this year. But by the same token, the uh, global lockdowns have meant that people are spending a lot more time in their homes with other family members. And it can be pretty crowd if, crowded in your home if you've got, uh, you know, if you haven't thrown out your old appliances that are no longer working, you know, you just throw things in the basement, right? And they accumulate. Um, people are doing more renovations of their homes and uh, using, you know, the space that they have. So people have been throwing out a lot more of their old electronics because of the lockdown, trying to uh, clean up and create a bit more space since they spend a lot more time in their homes than they have previously. So this means that more e-waste is tossed and also because of the uh, virus because of the pandemic and the lockdowns, there's less companies that are taking those products and recycling them. So the recycling rates 
could drop and therefore there's a lot more uh, waste because of the coronavirus from that point of view. Um, in terms of uh, climate change and global warming, of course, the more things that the energy um, that we require in order to build a, in order to mine uh, precious metals, for example, plus copper to put them in electronic devices, the energy expended to do it from scratch is much, much greater than recycling those precious metals and copper from e-waste and, and uh, producing uh, new products, right? So the, the embodied emissions, if you like, um, in production of these products is, is, is uh, you know, increased, greatly increased the more you throw out and, and don't recycle. Also, um, with, when, you, when you get rid of re refrigerators and air conditioners, there's uh, the working fluid, the heat transfer fluid, uh, which uh, moves heat from one area to the other area. For example, in air conditioners, the heat from inside the room that you're cooling to the outdoors, those working fluids, things like HFCs, hydrofluorocarbons, etc., have an extremely high uh, global warming potential. In fact, HFCs, for example, the global warming potential, which compares their, you know, one molecule of the HFC, for example, to a molecule of CO2, those numbers can be, you know, in the tens or twenty thousands. So when uh, air conditioners and refrigerators are disposed of improperly with a, and, and there's leakage of their working fluids, which then vaporize in the atmosphere, uh, then they, those have a CO2 equivalent of about 100 million tons of CO2 equivalent uh, per, per year, okay? So this can great, greatly contribute to um, climate change, global warming, you know, the, the improper disposal of refrigerators and uh, air conditioners. Okay, so there, there's lots of other things that are in this report. I highly recommend that you Google UN Global E-Waste Monitor 2020 um, uh, report. And uh, the, uh, there's a good article in the CB CBC. You can go Google uh, CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, E-Waste. Um, and then there's a link to the UN report from that article. And it talks in quite a bit of detail about, about the e-waste. The e and one of the problems too with the low, low recycling number is most of, their, most of the recycling of e-waste is, you know, a lot of it is shipped to India, for example, or shipped to the Philippines. And it ends up in villages where there's thousands of uh, basically shops that are, you know, small businesses. And, uh, you know, they take the e-waste and they basically, a lot of it's done by hand. They just pull it apart and they try to extract the, the valuable components of it. And then they, you know, they throw the rest of it out. Like it's not done in a coordinated fashion by the government. So, you know, the low hanging fruit, if you like, you know, the gold, gold uh, plated wires or plat any, any platinum, those, those, the high value components are taken out, um, but the uh, lower value components are just left in. It, it's not like there's enormous um, waste uh, government run or privately run facilities on large scale to uh, do it properly and extract, uh, you know, a much higher percentage of of components from from the e-waste. It's done kind of piecemeal by small mom and pop operations in, say, a village in India, and uh, you know, it's not it's not uh, done efficiently. And lots of countries don't even have uh, you know e-waste uh, programs. So 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 there you have it. Um, you know, it's, it's completely unsustainable the way we're dealing with it. Um, and, you know, I could talk about consumerism, et cetera, et cetera, 
you know, wants versus needs, uh, but I'm not going to go, go there at the moment. So anyway, I encourage you to read the paper and uh, please check out my website, paulbeckwith.net. Thank you for listening.